You're listening to Boobies and Newbies. and welcome to a special holiday edition of Boobies and Newbies, the podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today marks the sixth episode in our annual month-long holiday special, The 12 Days of Boobsmas. That's right, we've officially reached the halfway point of this year's Boobsmas festivities, And as per tradition, and considering it is the seventh night of Hanukkah, you know we had to squeeze in at least one Boobsmaka read. And boy, oh boy, did we pick the perfect book. (laughs) For today's Boobsmaka celebration, we're discussing sexy sentient food, elite chocolate milk, And of course, the age old question of which is better with latkes, sour cream or applesauce? I'll let you decide. If you're just tuning in to the 12 Days of Boobs Miss Now, don't worry. We've still got six more romances, six more mini pods, and six more giveaways to go. And of course, you can always catch up on past episodes of the 12 Days of Boobs Miss, as well as our episodes throughout the year on our website, boobiesandnewbies.com, as well as your favorite podcast platforms. Be sure to keep up with us at Boobies Podcast across the social media channels, except on TikTok, where you'll find me at Real Kelly Ray because they think I'm making porn. Also, no pressure. If you feel like making one more person's holiday a little bit brighter, might I suggest leaving this podcaster a five-star review on Apple? You can also join the Boobies and Newbies Patreon family for as little as $1 a month and have instant access to special events, bonus episodes, and so much more. It is truly the gift that keeps on giving. As per usual, you will find links for all of the above in today's show notes as well as on our website. And now it's on to today's Boobs Miss Festivities. Joining me today is one of my favorite romance podcasters, turned friends, turned co-host at times. It's host of Too Stupid to Live, Becky Felpin. Welcome, Becky. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here. This is my favorite holiday tradition. This is, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I look forward to this every year because I don't think we've missed a year where you and I haven't recorded a podcast episode together, let alone a 12 Days of Boobs Miss episode together. Yeah, it's like become like, oh, some people line up at the mall to like sit on Santa Claus's lap. (laughs) I get on a podcast and talk about sentient, sexy foods. You know, this is is the holiday season, Kelly. Who needs Santa when you can have bisexual sour cream? Like, come on. I've never, that's a truer word has never been said. Oh, it really has become a wonderful tradition. And this is this is one of the things that I love telling people about when it comes to the wonderful world of Romance Landia is the incredible people that I have met through podcasting. If people listening are longtime listeners of Boobies and Newbies or even Too Stupid to Live, you will know that I talk all the time about Becky's podcast. And in fact, Too Stupid to Live was one of the podcasts I listened to when I was deciding what I wanted to do in the world of podcasting. So Becky has truly been a part of my podcasting journey from like the very beginning. And Kelly, you told like I started like granted I started my podcast and did it but you told I did it before I knew what podcasting was. So to be fair. <laughs> before it was cool. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But like you taught me like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Let me do better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you really think. No, but like honestly, like you've taken it. I'm very much in awe of you. And I'm saying this also because you were you were also <laughs> name checked um, in my latest episode as well. Um, oh, my God. So there we go. You, what we did you. I do? Why did you mention me? <laughs> Oh, it, we, we were talking about I had Laura Yamin on. And it's actually funny you um, Laura. 
you um, chose a Chuck Tingle book because um, this was also kind of like a parody of a, you know, not as well done as Chuck Tingle, let me say. But um, <laughs> Laura was talking about how she always skips over the sex scenes. And she was saying, yes, oh, she said that on your your podcast. And so, yeah, yeah. Laura is also a longtime friend and visitor yes. of Boobies and Newbies. In fact, I would venture that the two of you have probably had the most appearances on Boobies and Newbies. And um, for people who, you know, knew me when I lived in L.A. or have come out to see uh, either of the live shows that I've done in L.A., Becky has been in attendance at one. Becky was a co-host for mm-hmm. the other one. So, yeah, uh, Becky is a go-to podcaster to collab with. And if there's anybody listening that is in the Los Angeles area, you should look her up. Um, And even if you're not, you should definitely listen to Too Stupid to Live, which I think is the perfect way to segue into you telling people a little bit about your podcast. And I especially want to know what you've got lined up for the holidays, Mm -hmm. because you always pick the best books to talk about uh, during this time of year. (laughs) As do you. Well, okay. (laughs) so Too Stupid to Live is a podcast that reviews romance novels five dollars and under. Um, As Kelly mentioned, the weirder, the better. Um, Mm. So this holiday season, I do two episodes a month. And this holiday season, we've got another Alien Hanukkah romance, which I'm very excited for. Another, as in there's more than one. Yep, there's more than one. Oh, boy, is there more than one? Well, there's two. Um, And then um, (laughs) another is a paranormal romance. I can't think of the titles right now. But um, I have a question for you as a romance podcaster. I am... Have for my Han- like I'm not I haven't recorded this Hanukkah thing yet, and it's probably by the time people listen to it, it'll all already be probably out. But if some the per- my guest had never read a ro- has never read a romance novel before, so this alien oh, romance, a newbie, we love it. She's a newbie. She's read Danielle Steele, I believe, and she's a big okay. reader as well. But she's never read a romance and just wanted to dive right into alien romance. And so there's a part Good. of me that's like. A, a little ang- like I'm she's gonna be great but like there's a part of me that's like oh no is is she jumping into the deep end of of romance I mean some people like that though like right. I think there's some people who want to dip their toes in and there's some people who want to dive into the deep end mm-hmm. uh you know trial by fire and it might not be a hit it might not end up being the thing uh that she loves however I think especially if she requested that, if she requested something that was on the, let's say, weirder side Mm -hmm. of romance, and I say that fondly. Yeah, oh, me um, too, yeah. Mm -hmm. I say go for it. In fact, actually, one of the... One of the Boobsmas episodes we've got lined up is with a group of boudoir photographers here in Portland. Oh, that I've gotten boudoir photography done. That's so fun. I have not done it yet, and I want to. I think what I'm going to do is save my pennies and get it done for like my next birthday mm. um, or treat myself, and these will be like new author photos because right now, the one headshot that I send people is me holding a mug with a penis on it. Right. Um, but, but no, I, I was put in touch with them by a previous podcast guest, Caleb, who is also a boudoir photographer. I love his content. And we, uh, they also have a podcast as well. And so we're going to do kind of like a cross collaboration. And when I told them, hey, I'm putting together, you know, the 12 Days of Boobsmas for Boobies and Newbies. Is that something you might be interested in? And if so, what are you interested in reading? Like, do you want to read um, a sweet small town romance? Do you want to read monster romance? Like, what do you want? And they all agreed that they wanted to dive in. Right. And uh, yeah. monster romance and alien romance, um, I think they had both heard about, they had all heard about on TikTok, which, Mm -hmm. you know, I (laughs) that's the thing is it depends. It depends what side of the Internet you're on. Uh, That will dictate perhaps where you begin your romance reading journey. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, they were game to do a to do a monster or alien romance. And so that's what we're doing. I mean, it's so funny. Like last week I recorded a friend's podcast and I completely like we didn't talk like I hijacked the show to talk about orc romance and fantastic the whole and so like I was still like thinking about it of like did I I didn't do the podcast like (laughs) 
we did the podcast. I mean, but yeah, but you know what? I bet it was very educational for your friend. I've never <laughs> talked about orc jizz so much in my life. And I'm oh. so sorry. And now I'm making this an explicit um, rating. But like, <laughs> it really is like the amount of time that I think about monster romance and monster jizz, particularly orc and minotaur jizz, is a lot. Mm. I think about it a lot. But I never, when am I ever in a situation where someone puts a microphone to my face and says, hey, talk about it as much as you want. So I just absolutely <laughs> grab the I grab the orc by the dick, as they say, you know. Oh, yeah. Which one? Because I feel like there's multiple dicks. Fin- like, oh, yeah, there's one. Yeah. Well, a Finley Finn, a Finley Finn. OK. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That reminds me. I saw this TikTok the other day where it was I forget what the what the context was, but it was somebody talking about like, oh, we're so obsessed with dragons, but also like what? Or maybe it was dino. No, it was dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. I mean, same thing, right? Like they just don't fly. Oh yeah, some people believe they are the same thing and are still around. <laughs> so they're out in California and um, wherever. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he he was talking about. He's like, oh, you know, we talk about dinosaurs all the time, but like, why is it that whenever you go to like a museum and you know, there's like the big dinosaur like replicas and statues and everything. Where's the dick? Like, where is the dino dick? And somebody had stitched it to be like, um, I'm a little concerned. Like, who's thinking about dino dick? Like, I've never thought about a dino dick in my life. And all I could think was like, well, clearly you've never read a romance novel. Like, mm-hmm. I, you've never been on my side of book talk. You've never heard the terms monster romance you know at least together so um you don't know what you're missing but um, I will argue this is that it's also like like dicks and vaginas are all like their anatomy and so whenever you see a skeleton like the when you're a kid and you see a skeleton for the first time your first thought is like oh, where's the skin? Like, oh, where are the muscles? Right. Like, oh, where are the... Where's their face? <laughs> and so then eventually, as you learn more, you're going to be like, well, wait, where is the dick? It's just like, ask. it's the, mm-hmm. you know, we don't need to stigmatize those parts. People fuck, animals fuck, have a good time. Right. You know what I mean? It's science. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, all that to say, uh, I mean, really, the whole point of this conversation is where is the Christmas dinosaur romance? Just going to put that out there. I think dinosaurs predate Jesus, Kelly, so they don't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> Where is the uh, Yule? The Yule dinosaur romance? Fair. There you go. Okay. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just there you go. So many opportunities. What came before Christmas? I, I would wanna- read it. Read a romance where a dinosaur like is frozen for a bunch of years, comes back after Jesus is like yes. here, and then it's like a holiday romance. Like, whoa, what is this Christmas thing? And like, but it's a dinosaur, <laughs> and it's also like a Scrooge, like you know, like the. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like if That's someone a, everybody write loves that. a good twist, you know, on a on a holiday classic. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> sexy dinosaur who, in this version, can talk. I need my dinosaurs to talk, by the way. That's I've learned that about myself. Okay, yeah, a, D- a Dickensian dino. Like I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here. Yeah, Dickensian dino humanoid. Like I, I know what I want. You know, and well, maybe, maybe like next that. year. Maybe next year, because as I'm learning with every year that I read romance, literally anything is possible. I know. Um, and it's beautiful. And if, if you haven't found it yet, chances are good. Somebody is already working on it. And with that being said, <laughs> I'm going to introduce everybody to today's reading selection, which I have so many thoughts on, which is wild considering it is a 4,300 word <laughs> short novella. And yet... I feel like I'm going to be thinking about this one for a long time, um, almost as long as the title. So today's <laughs> reading is Sentient Sour Cream and Applesauce Bisexually Get Me Off for Hanukkah Because the Latkas Are Gone, But My Ass Is Still Here by Chuck Tingle. And this book was published in December 2022. It's available on Amazon for $2.99, Kindle edition. Oh, Chuck. Chucky, Chucky, mm-hmm. Chucky boy. Um, okay, so we have to, first of all, talk about Chuck Tingle just for anybody listening who sadly knows nothing about the wonderful, zany world of Chuck Tingle. So um, what's been your experience with Chucky boy? Well, I have read a lot of Chuck Tingle before. I find, you know, he's like the foremost, like, 
satirist. His whole life, you know, is is kind of a satire. Him just by uploading what he uploads and publishes what he publishes, like that to me is art, if that makes any sense. And I think mm-hmm. what he's doing, he's like almost like this like Andy Kaufman kind of um persona in a way you know the way I I believe he he started out was as a joke submitted something for one of the Hugo Awards and it was like something like so-and-so alien pounded me in the butt and by you know some sort of loophole he gets this book nominated and like that to me is performance art and so like everything I think since then has been this just like commentary on like when you look through like the like his collections of stuff and how often he does it and what he does and how he does it it is just this like kind of satirical look at society and sexuality and gender and politics yes um, and it's also but also very funny titles where you know bigfoot is you know fucking the and president. the covers the book yes. covers as well like if you see a book cover if you see a chuck tingle book cover you know that it's a chuck tingle book which It's funny that I feel like, yes, it's very satirical. Yes, it's very funny. But I agree with you in that, especially when it comes to satire. Satire is very smart. Like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of social commentary that goes into social, political, like so many things that go into satire, which is why um, Saturday Night Live sketches either hit very well or miss very big. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And... Um, what I love is that he really has, you know, whether you you've read his books or you like his books or you just make fun of his books, there's no denying that people know the name Chuck Tingle. They recognize the brand. They recognize the book covers. Um, they find humor in the titles, which, by the way, I did just want to read a few more mm-hmm. for people. Um, so here <laughs> this. <laughs> I actually did read this one just and this is how he gets me is with the titles yeah pounded in the butt by my handsome sentient library card who seems otherworldly but in reality is just a natural part of the priceless resources our library system provides beautiful love love absolutely love we have my macaroni and cheese is a lesbian mm-hmm. also she is my lawyer we have uh, <laughs> let me see if I can find some of the dinosaur ones. Oh, I did love that. I mean, this might be one of his longer titles, as if the ones you haven't heard are long enough already. This pumpkin spice latte gets me off in a fun and sincere way because it's OK for people to enjoy popular things without being shamed for the perceived basicness of their beverage choices. So like at first glance, hilarious. It's it's a long title. It's so wacky. But at the same time, just in the title alone, I love that he's addressing something that is such a, a huge discussion topic, especially when it comes to like things uh, we associate with like men and masculinity and women and femininity that a lot of things that men do it's you know they're football fans it's they can dress up and you know scream and throw things at the tv and it's fine but god forbid a woman gets excited about a pumpkin spice latte like I love that he can insert so much into such a short piece of what I'm going to assume is fiction Um, But (laughs) he has on his Amazon page 392 titles to his name. But like if you read through the titles, it's like kind of like you see a history of like the United States in the last like seven years you know what I mean like oh very it, current it, yeah, yeah it's, it's all very current he he writes fast he publishes fast because like you mm-hmm. know he's keeping up to date with like you know current events and stuff and so it's funny to to like because I in the in the back of this book I mean I want to say like 40 pages there's like all of his books you know what I mean to right and buy and so I was like reading all of the titles and just like like being like oh yeah 2018 like oh yeah that was 2019 like oh yeah I remember when that you know what I mean and just like seeing how he evolved as an artist how our world has evolved you know the it's like right. oh, yeah, the pandemic and like you know all of that stuff right his most recent title um although by the time this episode comes out who knows like he might have more. yeah like and actually he hasn't put out a uh a holiday book yet this year so I wouldn't be surprised if he does do at least one um but his latest one is 
not pounded by the physical manifestation of the gradual commodification of art and expression into the nebulous idea of content. Like you said, it's very topical. It's very timely. It's very current. I think it's funny. I think we can very easily say like, oh, you know, when people think of romance that don't know romance novels, they might see a title like a Chuck Tingle title and think, oh, this is romance. This is romance as a whole. It's ridiculous. It's dinosaur porn, you know, whatever. When in reality, I don't think people are <laughs> give, really giving him the praise that he deserves. I really do I think people need to dive a little deeper when it comes to Chuck Tingle titles. And I'm like, maybe we need to do a whole episode about Chuck Tingle. I don't know. But at the same time, there, there's also something very humorous about that. Of yes. The fact that like these books are fooling people, you know, and it's like, yeah. it makes me laugh when I, when someone was like, like someone that I know, you know, would be like, did you see this like Bigfoot romance? Ugh. And I'm like, <laughs> you got to get with the times, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's very, very, so th- there's like that element to it. And, and I will say now I feel like there are a lot of Chuck Tingle copycats that are just not doing it as well. I don't think they're doing the satire. I think they're yeah. just going for the the shock value it of just like, the cover, look at this title. Yeah. yeah. And I think like, and I like was literally like the episode I put out today, it was, is one of those books. So it's just like, that's why it's on the top of my head. But it's like Chuck Tingle like goes, like commits to the romance of in this satire and I feel like whenever I find another book like that where someone's trying to make a point or you know doing whatever just fucking with you whatever whatever reason you're putting this up there they don't commit as well as Chuck Tingle and so like that's why (laughs) this was so refreshing to read because it's like oh if you're gonna use romance as a satire remember to use romance you know right well and that's the thing is I, I I don't know if I would necessarily It's hard to say if I would classify him as romance or erotica specifically because at least in the context of like the book that we we read for today's podcast, um, you know, they have this beautiful like sexual encounter that's like very fun. Um, And believe me, we will share excerpts from (laughs) for you to hear. But then, you know, the book ends. So it's, it's you don't really you don't really know if anything comes of it. You don't really know if there's like a a relationship beyond. <laughs> it feels so weird to say. I know. If there's a relationship beyond the book between Sarah and the sentient applesauce and sour cream. You would hope. You would hope. I want them to right. be a thrumble. Like, <laughs> and, you know, but it's like, who cares? It's like also like, it doesn't that's, matter, yeah. you know, and I that's think that's not like, why I'm picking up the book. No, of course not. Like, I just like feel like all of his books are just I mean, I don't want to like speak for another person, but you it does kind of like you kind of see what maybe he is going through as an artist and what like Mm -hmm. all of artists are going through and like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, okay, so in this book, the main like thing is like, oh, you know, amongst us, amongst people who celebrate Hanukkah, it's like, do you like sour cream or do you like applesauce with your latkes? And there's like these two different camps of. You and you either- and I have talked about this yeah. on multiple episodes of 12 Days of Boobs Miss because we've covered more than one Hanukkah romance mm-hmm. during the 12 Days of Boobs Miss. And I feel like this is something we've discussed every single time. A hundred percent. And so that's what this. So like this book is about that. But it's also like at the same time about like, why is there's why is there's this why is there this need for a binary? Like, why does it have why does life have to be one or the other? And I like I could be looking way too much into this. And but like, no, I, love I it. think it's but it, with yeah. you. Like, it's the personification of <laughs> literally of these things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like is like it does like kind of, you know, there is still like, you know, bisexuality erasure I think in culture and it's like okay this is fun you're like this is a metaphor for that you're using that and I don't know like it's just and so then when the sex happens it's like actual sex and we're doing it and we're seeing it you know and it's just it's so it's there there are typos I'm sure there's like some sort of like writing professor who's like well it doesn't follow this formula but in a way because of that his books are like everything he does is flawless just flawless yeah 
I don't give a fuck about typos. Honestly, Me neither. Like, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I have never been that reader that's like, oh, no, I couldn't read it because there just weren't enough Oxford commas. Like, I, d- I could not care less. Um, I do want to come back to what you're saying. I'm going to put a pin in that just for a second so I can give everyone the synopsis yes. for sentient sour cream and applesauce bisexually get me off for Hanukkah because the latkes are gone, but my ass is still here. By Chuck Tingle. Um, so here is the synopsis. Hanukkah is Sarah's favorite holiday, but there's one part of the festivities she adores even more than the rest, latkes. Who could blame her? These delicious potato pancakes are one of the greatest foods ever crafted, offering up two distinct ways to enjoy them. But this incredible culinary masterwork is not without drama. According to Sarah's friends, there's a sharp divide that's determined by what kind of sauce you like. You're either an applesauce person or a sour cream person. When Sarah discovers a sentient version of each condiment has joined her yearly Hanukkah celebration, she's forced to make an impossible choice. Fortunately, this year, Sarah's ready to chart a path of her own in a bisexual group encounter. She wants both. And there you have it. Um, and I I have to say, the, fir- <laughs> the first thing I've been reading, and I actually did a whole Instagram post about this when Halloween rolled around. I, I've been reading several books uh, where the love interest is some sort of sentient creature you mm-hmm. know I mean we've got Vera Valentine's uh, I think it's unhinged is the story where it's like a door um there's one with a pillow mm-hmm. I, I still my crowd pleaser that I still recommend to everyone is the Thanksgiving one also by Vera Valentine and her writing partner um I think it's J.L. Lagos Uh, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but I will put the link in today's show notes. They did one last year that was a uh, group sex with the main character and her Thanksgiving leftovers Mm. come to life. Sexy. And that was great. I love and and I love that each of them had like their own distinct personality. Like one of them was like, um, you know, like to be humiliated. And then Mm -hmm. like the other one was like, yeah, take a bitch. Like I... I loved that. But I, I have noticed there there has been this uptick in sentient beings in romance and specifically in erotica, because I think that's the oh, thing yeah. is like people kind of have a, a hard time like grappling with, oh, well, we're sustaining a long term relationship with this thing, um, but have them come to life for a sexual fantasy. That's OK. So we've got applesauce and sour cream. Yeah. Like I think like when I like talk with you or like talk with other romance, I kind of like about these kinds of things. Like I intermix romance and erotica all the time, but I do know that they're yeah. like, two distinct things, but yeah. And there's a crossover too. Like I think oh, we 100%. also think of things yeah. as erotic romance. So, okay. How did you picture the sentient sour cream and applesauce? Because they also, they do have names. So mm-hmm. like Logan is the sour cream and Elisa is the applesauce. So like they are they're human enough to the point where like we've given them names. Um and I I <laughs> I think I was just having a hard time like picturing how human esque they are. Oh, yeah? <laughs> because he also has like they have body parts. Like he has the dick. Mm-hmm. She talks about like eating Elisa's pussy. Yep. So I'm just like, okay, are they people that you can just reach a hand in and scoop out sour cream or applesauce because they he does talk about how Elisa has like kind of a transparent middle to her. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking like, OK, are people at this dinner table just reaching into like her stomach and like pulling out applesauce? Right. Well, the bowls are magic. You you can answer these questions right. in your head. <laughs> you know, like what I was picturing was like. Like, in my brain, uh-huh. just for funsies, mm-hmm. I was picturing that, like, the applesauce and the sour cream, like, magically, like, fly out and they, like, kind of, like, clay, like, mold into, they're kind of like clay face from Batman, I guess, and they, like, mold oh. into, like, body forms when they want to fuck. Like, they can communicate oh. with you, like, when they're in the bowl, but then it's, like, when it's time to get sexy and they're, like, well, I know, like, let me be my true self, and then it's, like, bloop, 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 and, like, you know, they, like, you know, it's, like, you 
you see someone like like a golem, I guess. Like, I guess in the Jewish tradition, okay. is a golem. Okay. That's what I was picturing, yeah. No, no, no. This, honestly, I like your way a lot better, and it's a lot sexier than the way that I was picturing it because, like, I was thinking, like, oh yeah, like they're like these things come to life. Okay, great. Um, but then I when they start when they actually sat down to eat dinner. I was thinking like, like, well, they're not going to have sour cream and applesauce like from these people. Like it's going to be like also on the table. Right. And then no, like they're walking yeah. around like you're passing around, um, you know, the bowl of applesauce or sour cream, except in this case, it's a sentient human affied person. Um, right. And so I was like, I could not, <laughs> I could not stop picturing like if somebody would just like, like, swipe their shoulders and like come back with like sour cream and then like there's like a piece of their shoulder that's like missing um no it grows back <laughs> see I was just like it's a little because that's what I was like it, it, it comes back together I don't know maybe I watch too many cartoons or something I like, like your and I version cartoon a logic. lot yeah. better because in my version there's they're like taking bites like out of these people and I'm just right. like ouch yeah. um so no I like your version a lot better um especially when it comes to like envisioning like the sex scenes like the more human that I can picture them the easier it is for me personally to like wrap my brain around it so like you know same they they have the same like human genitalia that like we do and so I was like okay got it okay this is helping yeah. me help paint me a picture because I will agree with you because it is hard to read at first like the first Chuck Tingle I ever read was like she fucks a LaCroix can and I was like <laughs> wait a minute what and like then and then and so then it was like oh okay sometimes like you have to do like first of all you can do the the imaginative work if you want right just like read it I I'm a visual person I suppose so I'm, I'm with like, you okay now I see what we got to do I gotta this is this is fun this is funny this is like a com- this silly drunken conversation jokes I'm having with friends like we're just like figuring out how would you fuck well, a bowl I, of applesauce? Yeah, of course. Now I'm going to bring this up at uh, Christmas this year, obviously. Um, but mm-hmm. this of was course. this was the part that threw me off was from the description from <laughs> the description from Bibbo, the host. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, um, sidebar because I I asked Becky before we started the host uh, who's hosting this dinner party for Hanukkah is named Bibbo Corm. And I asked Becky, I was like, is this like, should I know this name? Like, is it a play on words? Is it uh, based off of something? Becky didn't know. I didn't know. No. And so I just Googled Bibbo Corm. And all I could come up with is that Bibbo is apparently a character from Superman stories. But like, like back in the um, like actual comic books of like Superman. And then Corm is a short, vertical, swollen, underground plant stem. And I was like, I don't know if this is like, it kind of looks like a potato almost. I So I'm like, I don't know if we're putting these two together or if this is just based on something that I am not getting, but... I have a question for you and I can Google this, okay. and, but, but I'm, but I'm just going to ask you the question. Is bib to corn a thing? Like corn, is that a... Oh, is that, that sounds thing? like a thing. Corn? All I know when it comes to bib is like there's like a bib lettuce, right? Yeah, there's a bib lettuce. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, all vegetables, everyone <laughs> are pretty much all the same. Not to be that person. But. Setting aside the questions about Bibbo, Bibbo sure. tells um, our main character, Rachel, he says, Logan, he's a sentient sour cream. You can eat him all the way down to the bottom and he'll be just fine after a long rest. Wait, really? I question. I never knew how that worked because it is implied that like sentient uh, foods have visited this establishment before. Yeah, they regenerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bibbo continues. Yep, some living foods can't do it. But if they're in some kind of container, then it's fair game. And so I was like, is he also in a bowl? Like, I... I don't know. This this is where realistic brained Kelly gets confused a little bit. Um, not and this that this is where matters by any means. 
It doesn't. I and like I feel like after working in kids TV shows as like part of my day job for so long, like I think my brain just like automatically is like, OK, let's think of a justification. Uh, Yeah, like the uh, bulls in this world, they're like the uh, pods in Star Trek and you can like regenerate. And in here, like the, everything's made of cells. They regenerate when they're in this kind of bowl. That's what bada bing, bada boom onto the story. Bada and then bing, just, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, it's like this like weird like you just like cartoony you just yeah. do this cartoon logic and, and then honestly like, picture on. it however the fuck you want to picture it yeah. like this is just my brain playing tricks on me and i will say once they eventually do hook up which by the way does that happen in like bibbo's backyard because like rachel like leaves the table because she's like you know stuck on this choice yeah. of like sour cream or applesauce and she goes outside and she's apparently out there for like an hour and a half before i was picturing they check it on, on his yeah, I was picturing it on his deck and it was just like maybe they're in a warmer climate or something. I 100% was picturing them in like the Hollywood Hills. Like I was like, Bibbo oh, okay. is some mm-hmm. rich ass movie producer sure. that has this house in the hills. And while he is like wrapping things up at the party and saying goodbye to people, Rachel's on the deck overlooking the skyline of Los Angeles getting fucked by applesauce and sour cream. Mm, And that is how I will forever picture it. (laughs) See, I have been in my personal life rewatching um seasons three through seven of the real housewives of new york to prepare myself emotionally for the real housewives legacy ultimate girls trip coming amazing up, obviously so i was picturing this all taking place in the berkshires because i'm at the berkshires so i was picturing like fall i mean i fall leaves and like it's woodsy you know just because i had just watched the episode where uh, they're in the brochures. I like it. I like it. So it's open to so much interpretation. And see, and that's, really I actually kind of yeah. like the bareness of these stories because there's not a lot of time spent talking about like, this is where we are. This is who the characters are. This is what they do. It's very much just like, here they are. They met. They're attracted to each other. They fuck. We all go home. Yeah. There, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, it's there's something very playful and childlike about it. Like I was just telling you how I was, you know, hanging out with my friend's kids the other the other day and like the younger one we were playing like make believe and like the way you know like kids think and they're like yeah this is your baby his name's poop he's a boy and a girl you know what I mean like it was just like it was just this it was a playfulness that's like yeah. oh am I gonna like stop and ask this kid well wait a minute you know I mean Why not like I'm like joking around or whatever <laughs> yeah but like you know like there's just like this thing of like yeah yeah it's, it's playful I thought this was really fun and I I, I can take that pin out from our discussion from earlier and say I really do think it's a lovely subtle commentary on just like bisexuality in general and like especially Mm -hmm. when faced with choices like in front of people and how we handle that um versus in privacy and not not feeling like you have to dignify it not feeling like you have to choose a label for yourself and you can just be attracted to who you're attracted to and pursue it if you want pursue it with one of them pursue it with both of them because that's the other thing is at the end of the night they do ask her uh you know they meaning I know they have names like I know it's Logan and Elisa but I'm just gonna call them applesauce and sour cream yeah that's that's her you you can call by the real name you know (laughs) yeah but when they from now on when I review romance novels I'm gonna be human and alien and then that's it (laughs) (laughs) that's it but they ask her like well which one of us like are you interested in one of us and she's like no I'm into both of you like I want I want to do it with both of you at the same time and she's proud and she's proud of it and it's like she finds her voice in that and it's very <laughs> empowering yeah. and like I do identify as heterosexual but there was a point in this book where I'm like I feel so seen mm-hmm. because I literally have always enjoyed I'm saying it now Kelly I've always enjoyed applesauce and sour cream on my latkes not at the same time oh good I'm glad you're saying it now and I didn't have to ask you at the end of this podcast I knew you were gonna ask me now here's (laughs) the thing I'm getting I'm telling that this is my latka sexuality like I if I had a preference maybe more often do I do applesauce on my latkes like I think like that is preferable but I do not in any way hate 
sour cream mm-hmm. on latkes. Just more often I'm in the mood for applesauce on latkes, but sometimes I'm in the mood for sour cream on latkes. And, you know, here I am my entire life pretending to I have to take a side, you right. know, and now just like this book, reading this, knowing I don't have to, you know, feeling and why did very you feel confident. Like you had to take a side. Because, okay, as a as someone who is is neurodiverse um, and you're, everyone around you is neurotypical, I never gave a shit um, about this applesauce versus <laughs> sour cream. But it seems as if the, the neurotypicals that surround me do. Mm-hmm. So I've always been masking who I really am mm-hmm. as someone who, again, could not give two shits about what is going on in my latkes as long as it's a latka, right. you know, like the, it's the latka itself for me that I find delicious. And also there are many different ways to make latkes. There's like zucchini latkes, sweet potato latkes. So it also, there's a lot of flavor. There's a lot of spices. You can really do like a lot of different things with it. So sometimes like applesauce, like with the zucchini latke, like I would prefer sour cream, and then with like a potato latke, I would prefer applesauce. The metaphors so it just depends. and like about sexuality are just like bing bonging through my brain right now. Like as you're talking there about you know. that, because it really, it really is like you can apply it in so many ways. Like mm-hmm. and like you said, even considering what kind of latkes they are. But when it, and, and like for me, I I usually prefer sour cream. However, I can get down with some applesauce latkes. Do I mix the two? No, but I bet there no, are people I think, yeah. who do. I am sure there are people who secretly do, and they're like scared to say anything because like they're all We've alone. We've just been shamed yeah. too many years into thinking, well, there's one or another way to do it, and you have to pick one mm-hmm. and do it. Sound familiar in other contexts? I think Thank so. You. Thank you. Like I feel like I. This is just you know. I feel so. I feel so seen. <laughs> You know, when I never knew a sentient <laughs> sour cream and applesauce Hanukkah erotica was going to be the thing to make me feel vindicated in who I am. Kelly, as a person. you have no idea. Like, honestly, like, <laughs> so like as someone, OK, so like in my personal journey, aside from watching Real Housewives of New York, you know, I've also I, I, I got diagnosed with ADHD and discovered that I'm like neuro, neurodiverse. And so like when it's been ha- like this past year, I've just been discovering like all these different like memories and details about my life. That's like, oh, I guess that's why I'm like that. Like, oh, I guess that's what, you know, you have these experiences. And so like yes. reading this book my whole life, yes. you know, having like, are you uh, like sour cream or applesauce? And I'm just like, I don't care. Realizing, oh, OK, it's just another thing to add right. to the list of like that I'm different and that's OK. Oh, no. And I'm so glad you said that because this is, again, something I love about romance novels um, above a lot of other genres. And actually, I think young adult romance does this very well, is just kind of showcasing all the different kinds mm-hmm. of relationships that exist. Um, and in in that as well, showcasing all the different kinds of people that exist, because that's the thing that we all we all love to read about is people who look like us, who have the same experiences as us, who, um, you know, have had the same family upbringing as us, uh, finding love and a happily ever after because love is a universal theme that everyone can understand. Like there's a reason why the movie genres that do best worldwide are either romance Mm -hmm. or horror. Like because we experience love and fear universally in very similar ways. ways. You're not coming when you watch... um... Annabelle because that was the horniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen <laughs> oh god you know that doll in her hair it got me mm. got, um ew no we're gonna got my gonna apple be. juices <laughs> sauced ew. you're welcome you're welcome we're gonna get yeah. off that um yes, please. right away please, I'm, disgu- get off. I'm disgusted uh-huh. with myself but speaking of uh, mm. getting off, obviously we have yes. to highlight a few mm-hmm. excerpts from this this story. And like I said, this is only a little over four thousand yeah. words, so this is about the length of a chapter in one of my books. And honestly, I think that's all you need because I so I don't obviously know if it's I would a huge it to be longer. It's a huge commitment. I mean, reading this <laughs> is like reading Infinite Jest. Like if you really want to read this book, like you know, prepare yourselves, get, gonna, get in a nice position. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest and say that I read almost the entire thing on the toilet this morning <laughs> of course 
<laughs> me like that's where I read first of all let's all admit I we all as romance readers as readers we all read on the toilet that I have oh, read yeah. many a sex scene on the toilet it's I beautiful. do a lot yeah. of things I make calls on the toilet I film oh, TikToks I, I on the calls. toilet oh I don't do that I I play games and read and yeah Oh, My roommate puzzle. probably thinks yeah. I have like a lot of bathroom like issues because like I spend like time and it literally I could just be peeing and I'll be in there for like 15 minutes because I'll just like get sidetracked in whatever I'm doing on my phone. Oh, yeah. Sometimes like uh, you you want to finish the chapter and then right. it's, like I and then like I come back out and like they're like, well, why are you crying? And I'm like, they just got together. And they're like, <laughs> you, I thought you just want to go in the bathroom. I just and I'm had like, a yeah, really no, I did. pee. <laughs> It was just so therapeutic. Yeah, right. So I had I had two excerpts Mm -hmm. because one of them has some dialogue in it that is worth sharing with the world. But I'm going to guess that we probably uh, might have some overlap. So I'm going to let you go first if you have a favorite sex excerpt that you want to share. So this is my sex excerpt. And I guess I'm, I'm going to call it a sex excerpt, even though there's no like explicit, like, you know, he fucked her. That's this. fine. I feel like this was kind of like the emotional climax of the book. And I mean, climax metaphorically, a- soon to be literally. But like, <laughs> I just thought, you know, like, yeah, this was the most, imp- I just like love, I love the, like when it comes to erotica, specifically not just romance but when it comes to erotica I love the more I love the parts where the main character realizes that they're empowered so this was my moment for me so she's out on the deck or outside and the applesauce and the sour cream are there and they're like which one they're all flirting they're talking dirty they're gonna do it and they're like well which one do you want so here we go the same terrible question is suddenly bearing down on me a choice I'm unable to escape no matter how hard I try I can feel the terrible tension creeping back in, causing my body to stiffen and my mind to calcify. But before this feeling has a chance to take hold, I do something completely unexpected. I'm too exhausted to hide any longer. I plant my feet, look directly at this pair of gorgeous living foods, and make my choice. I'd like both of you, I announce, at the same time. And I cheered. I cheered. <laughs> I put my phone down and clapped. <laughs> Get sauced, yes. girl. Mm-hmm. Mm. I have got... <laughs> I'm going to start with when she's deep-throating the sour cream's cock. That's a great scene, too. Yeah. It mm-hmm. really is. And then I just have one line of dialogue from uh, later on that I have to share. But I did. I liked this description. Um, it is both comical and and sexy. So I open wide. And take the sour cream's cock again. Only this time, I never stop moving downward. Deeper and deeper, Logan's mammoth rod slips. Finally, coming to rest in the absolute depths of my throat. (laughs) (laughs) Just, oh God. Um, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. No, I'm not. I, I like the sentence too. I hold him here for what seems like forever, allowing the handsome living food a moment to savor my stunning deep throat performance. When I finally run out of air, I erupt off of him, gasping for breath as a long, semi-translucent strand hangs between my lips and his dick. Tastes sour creamish, I announce, (laughs) wiping my mouth. (laughs) I could use a little sweet to go with it. With that, I reach up and take my applesauce lover by the hand. I pull her down to the deck with me, the two of us wrapping our arms around one another as we roll from side to side in the throes of a passionate makeout. Um, And then the only other line that I had to share is uh, when she does eventually come. (laughs) She's. Soon enough, I'm blasting off in an orgasm of my own, diligently pounded into a state of utter bliss by the handsome sour cream. Oh, fuck, I shriek. Come with me. Blow that sour cream load into this tight pussy. Beautiful. (laughs) That sentence will haunt me for the rest of my life. (laughs) Just so everyone knows, that's exactly my thought process every time I eat latkes with my family. I'm mm. like, blow the night. <laughs> that's 
so gross. But I, when, you know, the part where she was like, oh, now I'm in the mood for something sweet. Like, that's what I get, like, yeah. when I'm, when I'm, like, eating latkes. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I need some, like, when I'm, like, doing, using sour cream first. Then it's like, now I'm in the mood for something sweet. Right. Um, and and I, I, when I was a kid, you know, I would picture, I had that thought when I was, like, eating a nice dinner with my family. And now I will never think of having something sweet the same way again, you know, mm, when it comes yeah. to latkes. It kind of reminds me of, like, the foods that we have or generally associate with having on Thanksgiving too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's certain things that you like bites together. Yes. Yeah. But like I, and while I like all the foods, I wouldn't want to have all of them at the same time. Or like, you know, there's something salty that I think goes with something sweet really well. Or there's something that's a little tart that I think will go with um you know something sweeter to balance it out like yeah. I, I I think there's a nice balance to have between the the sweet and the the salty coolness I, how do you even describe the flavor of sour cream like I don't I don't even know I don't think it tastes sour but I also don't think of it as being like sour cream like I, yeah I don't I know see it, like I see it as dip kind of like just yeah. like kind of like Maybe there's like a a slight ting twinge, like a zing to it, but not as. But I mean, even the way I said it was right. Not even it's very subtle. Like I don't know, but I was gonna say I do like like when like because it also depends on how the latka is cooked. You know, if someone burns a latka, don't throw it away. You eat it with applesauce, and I think the applesauce kind of out. You know, oh. if it's very burnt. I mean, okay. I like burnt things, so that's I do too. Just me. I, I always yeah. burn my bacon. That's how I like my exactly. Bacon. Yeah, I mean, dip it in applesauce. Well, I don't know about. Well, maybe I don't know. Who am I to mm. judge? <laughs> you know. So it, I mean, like it kind of just like it all really depends. And I feel like you know, everyone says that their parents and their mom and their bubbies and their zadies make the best latkes. Listen up everyone's parents and bubbies and zadies make the best latkes. <laughs> How dare you, Becky? Um, that's that's so funny. God, not, all I'm thinking about is that it's been a hot minute since I've had a latka. So I feel like oh, I might need to change that this year. God, they're good. I just I just love potatoes. Like, Me too. I just love potatoes. I always need to prepare myself because like in where I like my brother has started making latkes and you know my parents make mm. latkes you know when I see if if I see them for Hanukkah and like just because because they make them indoors and it's like you know they don't like well they open a window but like you will have that oniony potato smell like on your forever. clothes on your hair forever so yeah. I always like like to prepare myself these it's days like a campfire like, it it really is yeah like I, I love a good s'mores over a campfire thing but you're gonna have to throw away those clothes like or put them in the wash immediately oh yeah <laughs> or like like I take like aerosol spray like for them the bathroom you know and I just like sprayed on my jacket you know yeah. it's like there's I can't tell you how many times I've gotten into Ubers after like being in a lock zone <laughs> after a Hanukkah party being like well oh you smell good and I'm like this is disgusting like first the Uber driver is telling me I smell disgusting and also it's not even perfume based it's based on like oil and and garlic and onion you know like all of this I is bad. All of this is bad. I think you smell great. If you smell like a, like, there are worse scents to smell like than a latka. So just saying. But it's weird when you get into a car with a stranger <laughs> who says that. Like, if a friend said that, like, oh, you smell like latkes. I love latkes. Mm -hmm. It's very weird to come from, like, a Hanukkah party and get into, this has happened to me multiple times, Kelly, getting mm. into a car, just reeking of latka. <laughs> well, you know what? You never know. Your next Uber driver could be Chuck Tingle because it could be. We actually. don't know. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Oh, yeah. no. No. Isn't it? Isn't the rumor that it's Chris Pine? Yes, there is a rumor going around that Chuck Tingle is Chris Pine. Oh, because... that would just make my <clears throat> fucking year if it was Chris Pine. Well, because remember how like there was that thing that came around that like Chris Pine took erotica writing. Yeah, and like, and, like everyone UC thought that Berkeley. Was, like... And there yeah. was like there were pictures of him coming out of a bookstore one mm -hmm. time with like a pile yeah. of books and people were like, oh, I bet it's romance novels. Uh, in fact, I think I shared that on Boobies and Newbies. It was a great, yeah, he was coming out of Sky Skylight Books. Shout out mm. to Skylight Books. We love and he you. shops local bookstores. God, that's hot. I mean, it's really hot. We we love you. We love you, Chris Pine. We love you. We really Chuck do. Tingle. But I think because of that, like 
And I think maybe they're like, you know, because like, I don't think at this point I could be wrong. Chuck Tingle makes his appearance known. I think he wears like a mask when he's out. In oh. public. So no one knows what he looks like either. Okay. I guess that's probably very important to say. Mm. So I guess like maybe there was like one time where it was like a big Chuck Tingle thing happened online and then those Chris Pine photos were coming out. And so then Got I think like the, just the internet sleuths like were trying to like put it together and like hoping that was the case. Well, and or... God, it, imagine even if it's not Chris Pine and look, as much as I would love it to be Chris Pine, it's probably not Chris it's not, Pine. No, of course. But not, no. like, just like that's got to be nothing but fantastic press thinking that no, it's not some creepy guy at mm-hmm. home in his basement. It's Chris Pine. Like of all the rumors that you could have associated with you and your name and your books, that he's the best Chris. Sorry to anybody else uh, uh, who no, is going right. to yeah. like fight me on the Chris's, but I'm sorry. He is. He has been the most consistent. And I feel like he has improved over time, both in our hearts and just in his physical appearance. Because let me tell I mean, you, that man has a- aged like wine. Thank you. He's a pheno- he, he's a phenomenal Chris. And yes. I will admit there was a time where Hems- Hemsworth was my top. Same. But Chris Pine has usurped that role, yep. um, I, I think, amongst everyone. And so, yeah, I agree with you. For me, I'm just like, oh, God, we're, we're, we need to destigmatize so much about sexuality. And it's like, at right. this point, I'll take anything. If it's a yeah. rumor that Chris Pine writes these things and, like, people are going to be more accepting, great. You great. know, like, our yeah. world's so fucked. Let's just do whatever we can to make it better. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, Chris Pine writing, like, Battleship and Dinosaur Erotica would make the world better. So that's... Yeah, That's and I'm it could manifest. already be happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And honestly, Chris, if you're listening and you're not <laughs> writing erotica yet, go for it. Like maybe maybe this will be a new 2024 project for you to take on. Not that you're not a busy enough man to begin with, but yeah, let me tell you, you would have book talk on your side in a minute. <laughs> I mean, he's already there. There have been numerous times. There, like when I first moved out to Los Angeles, I didn't know that Chris Pine like lived in a neighborhood nearby to where our <gasps> apartment was. And so there, like twice, I was like with my friend that I went to college with, and like we were like at a coffee shop. And then at the other time, I was we were at a play, and mm. I was like, that guy looks so familiar. I think I took film one hundred and one with him at Emerson. <laughs> and she's like, that's Chris Pine. That's Chris what Pine, are you Becky? talking about? <laughs> like it's happened. And it's like happened. twice twice it's like I can't... he looks like an approachable like regular everyday person and I mean I that guess. in a positive yeah. way not to not to downplay like how incredibly good looking this man is or how accomplished he is but he does he looks like one of those celebrities that like if you did meet them like in person it would be at Vaughn's like it, it would just be it would be so low-key he would not be like shopping at, like Whole Foods it would be in the most Every day, like celebrities are people too, kind of location. So, yeah. but like he mm. has this look that's like, oh, you look like a handsome person I went to school with. He definitely has an East Coast vibe too, like especially when he's um, got like the beard and like mm-hmm. you know just it, some sweaters. Although, let's be honest. Uh, speaking of the Chris's, Chris Evans like reps a cable knit sweater like well, nobody's sure. business. I mean, listen, every Chris has their strengths. <laughs> Except for Pratt. Yeah. I, everyone, I hope everyone knows that I made a yikes face after. <laughs> I don't want anyone to think that I believe that wholeheartedly. Oh, well, Merry Christmas um, to everyone. And no, just to the Chris's. Just, just the to the Chris's and not Pratt. Um, yeah. And this has been, as always, a joy to chat with you, Becky. Um, I hope everybody takes the... Uh, 20 ish minutes to read sentient sour cream and applesauce bisexually get me off for Hanukkah because the latkes are gone, but my ass is still here by Chuck Tingle this holiday season. And fingers crossed that he puts out a new holiday romance. Like, I'm I'll be sure to spread the word so that everybody can get their holiday Chuck Tingle fix. 
And um, as always, you know, keep up with us. Make sure you're following Becky. Becky, where can the people find you? Yes, to for me as a human individual um, on <laughs> social, uh, it's Beckles212 on all of the things. Um, for my podcast specifically, it's TSTL Podcast on uh, Twitter. Who? But I don't know. I it, I don't go on it anymore. But no. Instagram. Um, I'm I'm my New Year's resolution is to figure out um what social media is in the year. 2023 well it'll probably be different two months from now so yeah yeah who knows but um yeah absolutely check out too stupid to live uh the holiday episodes i'm sure will be a gas i am very much looking forward to them and with all that being said we've got six more episodes of boobs must to go so make sure you tune in you won't have to wait long there could be a new episode tomorrow maybe the next day and in the meantime becky and i will leave you with this on the sixth day of Boobs Miss, my lover gave to me six, six billionaires. The good ones. Merry Boobs Miss, everybody. <laughs> On the sixth day of Boobs Miss, my lover gave to me six billionaires. Why be this reeks? Four dudes of fucking three butt plugs, two nipple. And I'll